Hello and welcome to this video on winning Nobel Prizes with Bad Ideas. Nobel Prizes are an annual award given out to scientific, medical and cultural accomplishments of significance. This includes an approximately $1 million cash prize. The award itself was made by Alfred Nobel with money he earned from his patent on TNT. It was likely out of a feeling of regret for the death his invention had facilitated. Regardless, the award now exists and is considered the epitome of five different fields of academia. This in and of itself is great news for anyone who wins one of these prestigious awards and a lot of people have won them over the years. That massive number is around the 900 mark since 1901. That is about 8 people each year who share part or take the whole of one of the 5 prizes issued. This is already a ridiculously small number, but it is only the winners. This is like winning the lottery, several times in a row, not an easy feat. There are even exceptional figures who have won it more than once, which is even more unlikely. The best example of this is Marie Curie. Unfortunately, Marie Curie is also the perfect example of how to win a Nobel Prize badly. She received two of them, one in physics for her and another researcher's work with radiation. The second was in chemistry for her work on discovering radium and polonium. As you can imagine, exposure to and working with radiation and or radioactive compounds for most of her life was less than beneficial to her health. In 1934, she died at the San Salmoz Sanatorium from aplastic anemia thought to be caused from her long-term exposure to radiation. Her story is both an impressive one but also an unfortunate example of the lengths and circumstances of many Nobel Prizes. When you begin to look at only medicine and physiology, physics and chemistry, there is a glaring similarity between many winners and what happened with Marie Curie. They have experimented on themselves to prove their theory. Looking at the even more narrow focus of physiology and medicine, of the 109 awards issued, at least six winners have done so as of 2018. That is an astonishing 5% of all Nobel Prize winners. It also seems to have an uncomfortable ability to increase the odds of researchers winning the award, and if they don't win, they die in the process. That is where the title of the video comes in. How some of these arguable geniuses won their Nobel Prize for some very dumb, dangerous, or outright crazy ideas that were right. Let's begin in 1956 with Werner Forsman, who won his prize for heart catheter research. Cardiac catheters normally require the insertion of a catheter into a vein, following this until it eventually reaches the heart. Once there, it can be used for many important procedures, such as ablations, or to measure blood pressure therein. This will allow a doctor to figure out whether or not the heart needs surgery. Prior to the development of this and other associated technology, it wasn't possible to do so conveniently or as effectively as we do now. Forsman knew of research from about a hundred years earlier that was done in a horse using an insertable catheter. He was not given permission to do this with real live patients, and lacking any other options, 
he chose to experiment on himself. This began by making an incision in his arm, followed by inserting the catheter, just before it got to his heart. Then he went to radiology, started the x-ray equipment, inserted the catheter the rest of the way, finished taking the x-ray, and proved the viability of his idea. Although it was well received, it was also incredibly controversial, and did lead to the loss of his residency. In 2005, there was a slightly different take on this, and involved a researcher by the name of Barry Marshall, who was trying to prove that stomach ulcers were not caused by stress, but instead a bacteria. To prove this idea, he drank a bottle of the bacterial culture called Helico pylori that had been growing in the lab. Five days later, he began to experience a loss of appetite, vomiting, and stomach pains, all caused by the bacterial broth he had been drinking. This matched with the evidence they had found in samples taken from people who had stomach ulcers. This was then treated with antibiotics. The important part here is that his work proved that the peptic ulcers could be cured and that they were caused by a bacteria. The combination of these two findings means that doctors could treat what had previously been, in the worst possible case, resolved with surgery simply by taking antibiotics and a short-term proton pump inhibitor. Finally, to return to a similar situation to Marie Curie, we have Ralph Steinman in 2011. Steinman was being given the honour for his work on the immune system. He discovered what is being called a new type of cell, the dendritic cell. They are important in the activation of T cells and form an essential bridge in the immune system between the ability to both identify the foreign pathogen and mobilize cells that can attack it effectively. Steiner was diagnosed with advanced pancreatic cancer in 2007. He saw this as an opportunity to start a single human trial. This was because he had less than a 5% chance of living more than 12 months. Collaborating with his colleagues, he was given a number of different treatments. One of these involved growing portions of the tumour in mice, and then using it to test the effects of different drugs. They could extract proteins from this, and he even had three different personalized vaccines developed for him that were based on his work with dendritic cells. This meant that overall he had eight experimental treatments running at once, as well as conventional chemotherapy. Unfortunately, he did die eventually, but he lived for four and a half years which far exceeds the threshold for most people under the same circumstances. As you can tell, most if not all of these were incredibly dedicated researchers who had just committed themselves to their projects. In all cases, the work itself did not kill them. Instead, their work helped themselves and others to live on through advancing medical care, services, or even bringing forward entirely new treatments. However, they are the lucky ones. There are instances of researchers who have tried to do something similar, and their dedication to their project has led to their death. The examples given here were only from Physiology and Medicine Awards, and as said, they represent a surprisingly large percentage of those Nobel Prizes, and aren't all of the examples that could be found, but it does demonstrate that some of the worst ideas as far as research is concerned 
can produce some of the most prestigious awards if done at the right time and under the right circumstances. Thank you for watching this video. If you have found it interesting, consider liking, sharing and subscribing. Please post any comments, questions or suggestions below.